So the other day I was driving down the motorway and um, this car broke down on me. Um, it just lost most of its power. Um, it was throwing up messages saying something about injector fault, uh, parking brake fault, the big red stop sign was flashing. And, you know, the whole dash was lit up like a Christmas tree. So um, I pulled over, stopped the car, turned it back on, it was fine. Drove on a bit and it happened again and it did this three times and then it didn't do it again. So I nursed it back home. I've plugged in the OBD reader and I'm getting this fault. So we've seen the, the clutch pedal position switch A circuit malfunction. So I did a bit of reading that's pointing to the uh, clutch switch. As far as my understanding goes, there's a clutch switch and a clutch position sensor. But um, this fault seems to point to the switch itself. But the position sensor uh, from my understanding, you can open it up and clean it. So I'll replace the switch and clean the sensor. So in typical Renault fashion, there's two clutch switches listed for this car. Um, the man in the parts uh, department of Renault told me there's um, two different ones. One they can order in and one's on back order. So you can probably guess which one I've got. Please give me the parts numbers. So if I can get a switch out now, I can um, check the number on it and see which one I need. So, but to get to it, you can see it's, no, you can't even see it. It's, everything's tucked up behind there. So this panel needs to come out. Uh, not sure how it comes out. Yes, I'm fastening in there. Presumably the switch panel comes out and this end piece looks like it comes off. So I'm going to take those off and see what's left. Yeah, the switch panel and the side panel just lifted off the trim tools. And that's this exposed uh, screw there. Um, those two screws to take out the handbrake switch that'll have to come out. And there's that screw down there. I'm uh, not sure if there's any end of there yet. But I'll do these now and then. Um, see if it's coming loose. Sorry, I missed a bit of filming because um, this escalated quite quickly. So, um, where was I to? When I removed this switch, there was two screws holding this on. Um, took this switch out. There's a hidden screw under there. So I pulled this back and it seemed to be attached to the centre console. So, I... Pulled the gate up, it just clipped off, and there's a that screw lines up with that, and so I took that out and lifted this up, exposed two screws under there, so I was able to pull the center console away, which allowed me to unclip it from the, you know, this panel is clipped to the centre console there. So I was able to pull this back. It's still attached somewhere up there. And presumably you have to take this panel off, but no, I've done enough. All I wanted was, excuse me, access to that switch there. And if you see the yellow bit, I think that's the position sensor. So I'm gonna remove this now and see if I can get the position sensor as well and see what ones we got. So I went a bit further and took the panel out completely. Underneath um, the center switch panel, um, there's two screws that allow me to lift this forward a bit. And if I can find the screw hole up there, behind you was um, one more screw holding this lower panel on so I was able to take that off. Uh, I did that. You know, I already had the clutch switch out which just goes into there, it pushes in and twists and then the uh, cable goes into the back of it. But I wanted to remove this um, clutch position sensor as well or switch whatever you call it. Um, this handles, well, go through the switches. This one on top 
um, tells the car that the clutch is up and that controls the cruise control. There's, if I can see it, there's another one at the back and that handles um, the, you know, um, tells the car when the pedal is down and you could start the car. This position switch, um, this is for the automatic handbrake, the electronic handbrake rather. So when you lift the clutch, get the biting point, the handbrake comes off. There's been a couple of times in traffic where this has, the handbrake hasn't disengaged and I've had to use the handle. So I'm thinking this was probably down to this. So I thought, well, all this is dismantled. I don't want to do this again. So I um, took this off and you can see the track. Um, this arm reads the position from here. So I thought I'd take this off and clean it and I've gone over it with the um, fiberglass pencil and I'll probably just spray it with some contact cleaner later. This was quite tricky to get off. Um, how was this positioned? It was positioned something like this. And then when that's down, that locks up in. So you have to lift that up and then you're able to pull this away and this bit at the back is hooked in. So let's see if that's locked in there. You pull that pin up and then you're able to lift that away. And like I said, this one and the one at the back, you just twist it and lift out. So that's easy enough. So I've got the new clutch, which I still don't know if this is going to do the job, but um, going by the folk called them getting and what people have said on the forums seems likely. And for the sake of 20 quid for the genuine Renault part, uh, I thought it was worth a go. So I'm going to replace this, clean this, throw this and then put it all back together and see what happens. I've cleaned up the position sensor and put it back in. Um, I did the switch at the back. I was just fitting the new switch in the front and um, I realised I haven't actually compared these. And when I did, I'm thinking this might be the problem. Still should only be affecting the cruise control, but I don't know if it's sending the wrong signal to the EC or whatever. Yeah, hopefully this will do the trick. So despite what this is telling me, it was in the clutch switch. I've replaced that now and I cleaned the position sensor and everything, put it all back together. And it's uh, still not right. Broke down, well, it went into limp mode with me again going up the hill. So um, well, I was going up a slope into a multi-storey, resulted in me now having to reverse all the way back and force everyone out of my way. It went a little bit embarrassing. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking if it's um, both times it's been under load. So it was going down the motorway at 70, um, honest, and um, going up a hill. So both times at load. So I'm thinking maybe fuel starvation. So uh, I know Cleo's I've had in the past have had issues with fuel injectors. So um, I think I might be leaning in that sort of direction. Okay, so you can see um, this is fuel line going into the fuel rail. I can't actually see any of the injectors because um, this, whatever it is, is in the way. Can't even tell what it's supposed to do. So um, I've got a feeling that's going to have to come off. So uh, I've got no way of seeing how that's held on. So I feel this manifold might have to come off first. And hopefully I can see how this is attached. So I started taking the bolts out, I disconnected the coils and removed those. And once this manifold's off, I'll probably pop the plugs out as well and check those over and probably give them a clean. So um, yeah, there was five bolts along the front and I found another one there. And just behind here, where was it? I did find one on this side. And there is one on this side as well. I can't see them, but if you feel around, you can just let your bolt heads. So I'm gonna see what I can do with that. Okay, so it turns out I was a bit hasty in taking off the inlet manifold. But in my defense, you know, looking around, there's absolutely no sign 
of how this um, shield is attached. You know, I felt all the way underneath, couldn't find any bolts. And I looked online, I had to do a lot of digging. Can't even see it. If I move the camera down, there's two holes inside of there. And I didn't even know what size bolts they were. Because um, I couldn't even fit the ratchet in there. I had to get a long 30mm bolt in there first, a uh, socket in there first and then attach the ratchet. So that's what I was dealing with, but I don't know. And that just slides off. So with that cover off, you can see we've got full access to the fuel rail now. So uh, it's just a case of uh, removing uh, the fuel line and clipping the four uh, electrical connectors for the injectors. And then it's just the two bolts holding the rail off and it pops out. So what uh, normally I do now is um, depressurize the fuel system, but um, as far as I can see online, um, every picture is sort of the scenic fuse box, um, they had the relays on top. So normally I'd just pull out the fuel pump relay, run the car a bit and um, get rid of any fuel in the system. But, um, presumably it's buried in there somewhere. So instead I'm just going to do it the messy way. I'm going to shove a rag down there to protect the alternator. And then use this pot to catch the hole and petrol. Which I do. So that's the fuel reel and injectors off now. So I'm going to pop an EV and see if I can replacement. Um, I will probably get a genuine second-hand replacement. I did briefly consider getting them um, cheap knockoff from injectors, but cheap electronics don't last my experience. So, um, and I'm definitely not going to pay what well, the genuine uh, new injectors cost. It's just not worth it. So I'll just go for a second-hand setup. Uh, I was thinking about the manifold, and since the bolts are off, I may as well take the whole thing off now and give the throttle body a good clean. So um, that's another course of misfires. So um, I removed that Jubilee clamp back there. And um, there's probably, yeah, there's uh, some sort of sensor coming off there then. There's probably like a vacuum pipe as well. So I take that off, give that a good clean and see if I can that replaced. Okay, so um, I did have a look on eBay for uh, replacement injectors. I found one very similar. There was a uh, two litre, I think it was for a two litre turbo. And the rail looked almost identical apart from the feed port. So, um, I don't know, it could be the same, but it could be different. But even if I did buy that and the injectors were the same and I could swap the injectors and use my fuel rail, I don't know if the injectors are any good. So um, I thought I'll clean the ones I got. So um, I had a look online. And I think they're looking for an average of about 180 quid to test and clean all four. And you know, I'm not paying that. So I found this on eBay. So I'm gonna give this a go. So you've got two different nozzles. These go on top of, take this off, stick that on. And when you push down, you get a constant um, pressure of um, car cleaner. So um, this clicks into there. They give you two ones for smaller injectors. So, and you got two different fittings as well for the electrical contacts, rather. So you get a small one and a large one. So you plug that in there, and then you just use a 12 volt battery. So while you've got a constant um, pressure of the car cleaner going through, you fit the negative and then you just pulse the positive on the battery. So obviously not spraying this at the battery because you've probably got some sparks going as well if you're doing that. So um, yeah, I'll take the battery off the scenic now and give us a go. What's worse that can happen? Right, this isn't very elegant, but I think I'm getting somewhere. I'm 
have to look at that footage myself now and see if that's any good. Yeah, I'm confident that was uh, looking okay. It seemed to be optimizing nicely. I did notice a change as well. So um, I think it's doing something. So I'm going to run through the other three now and get them back in the car. I had to take a quick break. Uh, I ran out of car cleaner, so uh, when I popped out to buy some more, I thought I'd use the opportunity to look at the footage. And that was the first injector I cleaned. And um, that one wasn't actually atomizing as well as I thought it was. I was getting um, like the two strong streams instead of the misted. So I think this could well be my problem. So um, these two, uh, the cleaner was atomizing really nicely. And I was in the middle of doing this one when I ran out of cleaner. So I'm going to finish that one off. And then I'm going to clean this one again and see if I can get it spraying properly. And if not, I don't mind replacing one. That's not as bad as replacing all four of them. So let's we'll see how it goes. Okay, um, considering that was probably the dodgiest bit of kit I've ever used. Um, I think it's done the job. I mean, you can't really doubt the efficacy of what it's achieved it's there was this one injector that i'm sure there was a fault but uh, that is now atomizing the car cleaner properly so i'm sure well i'm pretty confident it's going to do the same with the petrol so um these are now all producing the same um misty spray so i'm confident now i can put these back in the car and they're going to be doing their job properly um while i put it back i'm gonna use the same stuff to clean the throttle body and then I'm confident on the fuel inside of things and the air side of things so if I have any other issues then I'll be looking at the ignition um, yeah for the sake of 10 pound I mean you couldn't be prepared to make a mess and uh, be prepared to MacGyver it a little bit but yeah I'd say give it a try Um, jumping all over the place, but um, there were gaps in between uh, different jobs on this car. I think the last place I left off was um, changing these. No, I didn't change the injectors, I cleaned the injectors last time, but that didn't work, so I ended up changing them. So uh, you can see they're all nice and shiny. So um, that still hasn't fixed the hesitation, as far as whatever you want to call it. But uh, I do feel like the car's pulling better with them. I don't know whether that's just my imagination or just trying to convince myself that I haven't wasted uh, a lot of money. But um, yeah, I'm going with it. So after this, uh, I did take it to the garage and he couldn't pop any coats off it either. So um, yeah, it was the day before the Jubilee weekend, so uh, he wouldn't be able to touch it to the mundane. And, you know, it was going to be a lot of trouble in there, so I thought I might as well do that myself and uh, save myself the labour. But he did agree it's like a fuel starvation issue. So after doing those injectors, he suggested the next place would be to change the O2 sensor. So I've changed that one because it was nice and easy to get to. Didn't fix it. I don't know what I don't know whether it's just me, but it does seem to have fixed um problematic idle problem this thing had. So to get to the the pre-cat O2 sensor, from what I gather, I couldn't see anything from underneath and I did stick my arm up, couldn't feel anything. So it's buried under there somewhere. I don't know if this video really shows how bloody awful this is to get to. 
So, um, yeah, I think next step, I'm going to have to remove a lot of this. So I'm going to take off the papers, take off the plastic paneling, and I can't remember how much of this is going to be. I'm going to strip off as much of this as possible. And then what I might do is we'll have another go at put these pipes off and clean this um, throttle body again. I'll check the air filter on that there. And then hopefully I can get some sort of access to this lamp to sense again there. Okay, so with the new rubber seal removed, um, there's one, two, three, four, ten mil plastic bolts that come off there. And then this bit can clip off. That gives you access to the driver side white arm. And you had access to the passenger side anyway, but you take these off. And then this lower plastic trim can come off. So, a couple of screws, one either side. So, with that off, that gives us access to this metal panel underneath. Uh, I think this has ever come off, but I have had this section off. That gives you access to the. can't even see it from here, but it gives you access to the. Computer. So, uh, with this off, you can. Um, see the wiper linkage and everything and then on the uh, this area normally fills up with leaves and whatnot so it's a good time to give this a good clean out so uh, I'm going to take the wiper arms off next and this plastic panel and see where we're at okay so with the trim and wipers removed you can see where we're left with looks like this panel is completely removable which is good because that's what's going to have to happen so we have a series of um, bolts, that's two, that reinforcement one, left to one, three, four, five, one out of the length, six, and I don't see if there's any belly behind there, so I'll probably end up having to remove this linkage as well, uh, just get a bit of better access, there's bolts along the front there, one other side there. And then that first and um, see what's left. Okay, so I'm no nearer the lambda sensor, but so far I've taken out the air filter, checking there wasn't any major blockages, so it's fairly clean so that can go back in. I removed the um, induction pipe, the inlet pipe pipe, and then Access now to the drop body. It's like a bit manky to give out a good clean out. So, um, I think I'm just gonna have to shove my hands down here and just feel around enough for the best, I think. I'm not leaving the gate today because it's Sunday and now it's open. So, um, yeah, it's more about ordering the new uh, lambda sensor to go behind there. the manifold bit, you know, similar to what this is. But, um, you can just about get to the top of the bolt but you can't get anything on there and there's no room to get a long span or anything anyway. So um, get one of those um, proper tools and probably have to run extensions right up the back there. So anyway, I think I'm doing it so far. But um, I got the tools, get the sensor and see what will be done. I'm a plus side though, though that's gonna be great access to the block I feel like I'm all the time. Same with the down here. So, um, changing all filters and easy to have. It looks fine now. But at least two studs, um, there's a big block of cast aluminium that goes on there and that protects the fuel rail. That's great. I don't be removing that every time I have to do the oil filter. So um, normally I end up doing this blind. But Ah, uh, So after a lot of fighting with this bloody um, O2 sensor yesterday, um, I've removed the bracket that was here holding the O2 sensor cable onto. That gives me room to get my hand down there. And I've removed some wiring and pipes from this side. It gives me better access to it down there. I can actually see it now, which is, uh, it's a positive. So um, I don't know if this heat shield's getting in the way. 
is one bolt there and one on the opposite side at the top. There's two down the bottom and uh, one about halfway up. Just about to see it. So um, I've got the two top ones off, they were fine, but those three down there, they're all misshapen and rusted away. So I'm going to try and attack those next and try and get this heat shield off and that uh, should give me better access to this sensor. So I did take it back to the garage and um, he's giving up now again. <laughs> he's just too busy at the moment and this car's going to take a lot of um, fiddling about with trying to figure out what's going on. There's something new. He did manage to get some coats off for this time. So this is what we're looking at. Um, I'm not sure much to listen to the clutch pedal switch circuit and pedal sensor circuit tracks. Um, gonna come back to that. I don't think that's got anything to do with the problems I'm having. So I'm concentrating on the misfire and the misfiring on cylinder number three. So, um, I'm not sure what's going on with this misfiring on number three. Because um, if it's only misfiring on one cylinder, that can only be. Um, spark, fuel, or compression. So um, I've changed the plugs, I've changed the coils, changed the fuel injectors. So um, I think next step would be to do a compression test on this. It is um, saying it's on number three, but I'm gonna test all four of them and just see what numbers I get. And being French, uh, number three is going from the gearbox side, so one, two, three. So uh, I'm gonna do that next before I go any further. Alright, so that's all set up now. That's on cylinder four. And that's 150. It's looking good. Is cylinder number two. That's about hundred and forty again. Yeah, okay, so uh, one, two, and three were all around the 140 mark, and number four was 150. Yeah, sounds healthy to me. Well, I know I'm ending this video on an anti climax, but I'm afraid I accidentally fixed it um, off camera. Um, yeah, so after the compression test, that was fine, so put it all back together. Started lovely, cleared all the codes, took it for another spin, and it was great. So, um, yeah. So I think what has happened is the injector was a fault initially. And so but when I changed those, I don't know whether the connector was always an issue or whether I didn't put it back on properly when I fit it. But, you know, you, You'd think you'd have different problems if the injector was wrong and then I hadn't fitted the connector properly or, or whether the connector was a fault all the time. But I'm not going to think about it too hard. I just know it was either the injector or the connector, or whichever one it was, is fixed. So yeah, so I really should start trust my instincts because I just blended into this, looking at the diagnostics. It led me down the wrong path. And um like I knew that hesitation is fuel starvation. 
So I should have just run with her. You know, with Renault's, it's always going to be either injectors or if it's running lumpy, it's going to be like, you know, coils or spark plugs if they're old. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to think about it too hard. I'm just happy this car's finally fixed so I can actually get on with the other two. And they don't have to drive this round anymore.